Hello and welcome to tutorial 176 uh, in this series of tutorials and programs that focused on TradeStation Easy Language. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at something called the blend bar. And what the blend bar is, is a bar which is made up of a user number, a user input number of previous bars. So what I'm going to do is just go into the program here and turn off or turn the transparency down to zero. So we can see the actual bars, which are both on the chart at the moment. We've got the blend bars and the actual. It's going to turn this down to zero. And you'll see now, for example, the uh, the user number of bars is four. So the blend bar is going to be made up of the lowest of these four bars, the highest of those four bars, the open of those four bars, and the close of the four bars, whatever that is at the moment. So just going back to the study and I'm going to turn the alpha back up to let's say 190. It's a number by the way between zero for transparent and 255 for fully opaque. And you'll see there that uh, the blend bar, you can see you've got the, the wick drawn in this pale blue color, the, the main part of the bar drawn in the magenta type color. So let's have a look at how we do that. Now there are a couple of ways and uh, by far the easiest, but I found maybe a little bit less easy to control the colors and transparency, etc., is the plot paint bar. And this is a paint bar study incidentally. And uh, the syntax for that is essentially the, uh, the high, low, open, close. So the high is highest H blend num, which is this user input number of bars. Lowest is the lowest of low blend num, user, user input number of bars. The open of blend num minus one. The reason it's minus one is because we start at the zero bar, then one bar ago, two bars ago, etc. And then the close is the current close. And I just did two different versions depending on whether it's an up bar or a down bar. Now the other, which I'm going to spend most time talking about, way of doing this, is by using trend lines and drawing objects. Let's look at the main part of this. And we've used B endpoints. So to start with for the wick, we create a B endpoint for the current bar, bar number, I'll mention that in a moment, and the highest high blend num and low, similarly for low. And then we create a trend line using the syntax trend line dot create BNP high, BNP low. That creates an instance of the trend line. And then we've got various properties that we can use. And finally, we add it to the chart. Now, in terms of syntax for the trend line, if you click on uh, this area here, you'll see all the syntax available. And then we do something very similar for the body. We've got two other BN points and we have BN point create bar number for the open blend number minus one, just similar to how I did for the paint bar, how are we getting that value? And then for the close, we create a trend line and we set some differences in the weight and then we change the color based on whether it's an up bar or a down bar and we add it to the chart. Now, a couple of things to mention. The bar number is not the same as the normal bar number because the drawing object or B endpoint uses an absolute number, an absolute bar number. And that is calculated by saying bar number plus max bars back minus one. Now, the other thing we did, we added color. Now in the inputs, the colors are set up as strings. So we need to convert them to color objects. And if you look at the inputs and the variables, you see I've got the color strings here, but I've also got some color object variables here. We do that in this little section here. We just do it once, of course. And the syntax is the, uh, the wick color dot from arg b. Then we've got two inputs, the alpha, which is going to be the value we're using for transparency between 0 and 255, and the color dot from name. And the from name is expecting a string. And that does need to be one of the colors that's available, which are listed on the tutorial page. Although if you get it wrong, 
it uh, will just come out black. Now the only thing, other thing I added is obviously if you left this running for a very very long time you would end up with a, a very large number of drawing objects. In fact two per bar. So what I did I added some syntax here to limit that to a max number defined by max tl num which is a user input. So we use drawing objects dot items three dot count. Now if we go on drawing objects you'll see what the uh, what the items are and click on object category you'll see the various object categories and as is three could have used also one but uh, just done that for three and that limits the number down to max tl num and the way it does it is it just removes the the oldest every time the value is equal to the maximum number plus two in other words it's gone beyond the uh, the place where it should be now this doesn't really take account if you're drawing other trend lines on the chart or you have another trend line drawing program on the chart i haven't taken account of that but for the uh, for this program it, it works fine as long as there's nothing else, no other programs adding things to or adding trend lines to the chart. Oh, and one thing uh, that is of interest is that you might think, obviously this is running every tick, the program's going around every tick, that by the end of this program, we're gonna end up with an even greater number of trend lines because it's gonna add a new one each tick and it's gonna overlay and overlay and overlay. Well, that doesn't happen and that is because the uh, persist property of this trend line is by default set to false. That means when the tick ends, when the next tick starts, the previous line disappears. And then you might think, well, hang on, that, that they're probably gonna disappear at the end of the bar. Well, that doesn't happen either because what happens is that when we move on to the next bar, it leaves the last uh, line drawn there on the chart. And if you were to try and move, for example, this tick, you'll see that it seems to just just jump back into place. And that's because in reality, the one that I moved is disappearing because the persist value is not set to true and the new and a new one is being drawn. Okay, well, I hope that might be useful to you. You can, of course, set the colors to whatever you want, provided those colors are uh, one of the standard names. If you are interested in TradeStation and Easy Language, then please go to markplex.com and subscribe to the site. Also, please subscribe to this video channel. Thank you very much.